friends! So if you've been watching, I've been going through how to do a yoga practice at home. And so this is part four of that video series. Part one was Sun Salutation A. Part two was Sun Salutation B. Part three was the finishing postures. And those three videos make a complete yoga practice that you can do at home anytime. Now you can add on to that with what's called the standing postures. And those come after Sun Salutation A and Sun Salutation B. Now the standing postures have the most variety. So in different yoga traditions, they look um, different depending on what style you're doing. So there's no uh, set sequence like there is for Sun Salutation A and Sun Salutation B and even for the finishing postures. So it gives you um, more opportunity to play and to experiment. So there are some basic standing postures that I'll go over today. And when we have the basics, then we can add on to those. The style that I'll be going over today is the one that's used in most American yoga studios. It's different than what you'd learn if you were studying yoga in India, which is more static. The style I'll be going over today is the American Vinyasa style, um, also called the Hatha American style. And, and it requires a lot of vinyasas between the different movements. And this built up over time as um, yoga moved from India into the West and combined with um, Swedish, Swedish calisthenics and other forms of calisthenics from Europe. So uh, yoga in America is a sort of amalgamation of different styles. So for your own home yoga practice, you would have done Sun Salutation A, a few rounds of those, a few rounds of Sun Salutation B, and then you get ready to practice the standing postures. So you'd be from you're finishing your sun salutation B, you end up in your downward facing dog. So we'll come to our downward facing dog. Our nice V shape and our body's warm from our sun salutation A and our sun salutation B. And so our the foundational standing posture we've already done from Sun Salutation B, and that's Warrior One. So we're gonna take our right foot and bring it between the hands, back foot 45, and we inhale up, knee bent, Warrior One, Vibhadrasana One. And so this is a standing posture that requires us to focus on our core and our foundation and the arms again shoot up, they're not passive, they're reaching up with dynamic tension. So when we do our standing postures, we have a number of options on whether or not we want to take our vinyasas between them. And that's whether or not we're building strength and that's our goal, or we're taking it easier because that's what we need that day, that's where we are in our practice, or we're healing from injuries. So we usually begin our standing postures right foot forward first. So we're on our right foot, take a deep inhale, exhale, frame the foot, step back plank, chaturanga, inhale, up dog, exhale, downward facing dog. Deep inhale in, exhale out. Left foot comes between the hands, back foot spins, inhale up. Warrior one, left side. Checking that knee alignment, making sure it's pointing towards the little toes. Deep inhale in. Exhale, frame the foot. Step back, plank, flow through. And if we were skipping the vinyasas, we'd go right to down dog, or we'd go right to the next standing posture. A few breaths here. And we have a couple options here. We can go up the stand and take 
a sun salutation A, or we go right to the next standing posture. In this practice today, we're going to go right to the next standing posture. So we have another option. We can bring right leg to the sky or just between the hands. So if we were going to bring the right leg to the sky as a transition, we would inhale it up. And there's a couple ideas here. So one is we want to keep the hips squared. That's one option. So that means as you only go as far as your hip joint allows. You'll also see other people take it way up. That's another option. So this is going farther than my hip joint allows. And then exhale, we're using our core strength to bring that foot in. Back foot comes down again, and we're adding on. Inhaling in, up, warrior one. So we're adding on to this, which means I'm in warrior one. Take a deep inhale, and now we're going to go into warrior two. So my back foot is going to come 90 degrees. I'm opening up the hips, dropping the arms, relaxing the shoulders. Palms facing the ground, looking out into the future over that front hand. Now, within our warrior two, a lot of people focus on whether or not you can get these hips absolutely open, right? It's going to be like <clears throat> absolutely open. That all depends on your hip shape, like how you're actually formed structurally, in addition to how strong your glutes are. So, for the vast majority of us, it's not going to be absolutely open, and that doesn't matter, right? So don't let everybody shame you into how open your hips are here, okay? No shame in that. If they are, just be like, shh, focus on your own self. All right, so this is your warrior two. It does matter, though, that your knee's not coming in, because that leads to some injury down the line, so you want that knee open towards the little toe. Deep inhale, exhale, we wiggle down, back foot flips, step back plank, flow through, or we skip that vinyasa if we're not focused on building strength. If we took the leg up on one side, we're going to do it on this side, either squaring those hips or doing the crazy, taking it through, warrior one. Deep inhale. Exhale out, warrior two variation here. Deep breaths here. Deep inhale. Exhale, we windmill hands down, back foot pops up, step back plank, flow through. Keep us here. So we've done warrior one and warrior two. And we'll add on to our standing sequence. Right foot between the hands. Back foot 45, warrior one. Exhale. Deep inhale. Exhale out, warrior two. Deep inhale. Exhale out. We're moving into reverse warrior, so we're flipping this top hand. We reach forward to get extension, and then we take it up to the sky. Back hand comes along the thigh. Now, you'll see sometimes in Instagram or something, people's warrior, reverse warrior will look like this. That's like getting the length along the side of the body, so we reach up like we mean it. I call it pizza in the sky. Reach up. Deep inhale. Exhale, windmill, hands down, back foot pops up, flow through, inhale up, exhale back. And just like in our sun salutations, we take any variations we need for those vinyasas. So if we need the variation on our knees, variation of challenge pose, we give ourselves what we need because this is our practice, not someone else's. Left foot between the hands. Warrior one on the inhale. Exhale out. One more big inhale. Exhale, warrior two. Big inhale. Exhale out. Inhale, we reach and flip the hand. 
Exhale, reverse the warrior. Reaching up, up, up. Good extension along that side body. Big inhale. Exhale, we cartwheel down. And cluck her. Few breaths here. And then we add on. Right foot between hands. Inhale up, warrior one. Another inhale. Exhale out, warrior two. Another big inhale. Exhale up. Inhale, reverse. Let go. Good. This time, we can come back to our warrior two and prepare for triangle. Chikanasana. So to do that, we're going to straighten that front leg, and then we're going to take sassy hips. So booty comes to the back, reach, reach, reach. Then we take the hand down to the shin, other hand up. And we're rotating from the ribs up to the sky. So triangle is a little tricky because most people's body starts going like this right away, and they want to reach the ground. Y'all, heaven's not on the ground. It's all about turning that torso. So if you find that you're starting to do this, right, that means you need to come up higher, up higher. Because this isn't the goal, right? Goal is the rotation of the spine. So if we can get down here and rotate, that's great, but it's not any better than being up here and rotate, or up here and rotate. This is actually harder work because you're holding your body in cord space. That's harder. Okay, deep inhale. On the exhale, to rotate down, we have to be careful of that low back. So we're going to flip that foot and rotate carefully. Now, if you're like, I still need more work, <laughs> there's always the option if you're trying to build that strength to take the three legged plank, right to the sky, three legged chaturanga, whoop, up dog, down facing dog. Good. Now we'll do the left side. So we'll take the left foot between the hands for warrior one. Deep inhale. Exhale out, warrior two. Deep inhale. Let it go. And now we reverse. Exhale out. Inhale. Exhale, warrior two. Straighten that front leg, sassy hips. Make our way into our triangle. And again, we're looking at that body. How are we rotating? Sometimes if we take this upper arm, put it behind our back, we can see that rotation a little better. Good. Exhale, we close the hips, and that back foot comes up. So we need to be careful of that rotation. And we can try that three-legged chaturanga. And if it's not, don't worry. It's not the yoga Olympics. All right, that's not the point. Good. Exhale. Take it out. And we only have one more we're going to do today for these standing postures, even though there's a whole bunch more we could do. These are the basic ones that I'm leading you through. So right foot between the hands. Warrior one. Exhale out, warrior two. Good. Take it up on the inhale, reverse it. Exhale, warrior two. Straighten that leg, find our triangle. Inhale, warrior two. Let's bend that knee. We're coming into side angle from our warrior two. So we're going to take elbow to our thigh, and lift up this hand. Now again, it's all about that rotation. So we're collapsing in, and lift up that torso. Now, there's a couple, many variations of side angle. So this is uh, number one variation. The other one that we can get into, is say one warrior two here, it's a tick-tock variation. So we're reaching, tick-tock down, 
arm just reaches down and your core is supporting you. And this one's a little bit more challenging. If we have the flexibility in the spine to keep that rotation and not collapse down, we can reach all the way down and we can help that rotation by dropping the arm behind us. Variation three, the arms in the back by the foot. And if it's by the foot, then we can take utita. That means extended side angle. But we don't start here because your back will be like, I don't want to be doing this. Make it stop. And if your back's saying that, dude, be here. Good. So we don't transition into our chaturanga from here. We gotta go back up warrior two. Deep inhale. Exhale, we roll down. Take that vinyasa. Last side. Left foot. Warrior one. Exhale out. Warrior two. Flip. Reverse. Come back to warrior two. We straighten out that leg, sassy hips into triangle. In triangle. Back to warrior two. And then we breathe into side angle. And we can figure out maybe the tick tock variation is for us. And transition out, we come back, warrior two. Exhale. Take that vinyasa. Now to finish our standing postures, we always do a balancing pose. So we're gonna come to the top of the mat for that. Whenever we come to the top of the mat, we take that halfway to the left, straighten out the back, exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Find that Tadasana. So, those standing postures, there's many other ones. Those are the basic ones. And if we have those down, then we begin the other ones that require more of that spinal awareness. So, for standing and balancing postures, there's, again, the king and queen one, which is tree. And, Tree is not one you conquer and then stop practicing. It's when you practice forever because it's all about awareness and you keep adding on to it. So we practice balancing postures because as we get older, the strength in those little muscles, right, in our ankle, start wearing down. And we want to be able to get up when we fall and catch ourselves as we're walking. Um, and yoga help, helps allow that when we practice our balancing postures. So we're gonna bring hands to heart center and we shift the weight in that mountain pose. Then we'll shift it on to the right foot so our weight is in the right foot. And then again, testing out balance. And the first thing we'll do is bring to kickstand tree, that means toes on the ground. And we find a little focal point on the ground, a little speck. And then we bring the foot up the leg to the calf. You can leave it there, or you can slide the leg up to the thigh. Not on the knee though, we don't want it on the knee joint. Now, in the school I trained in, the theory was, if you have to place your foot there, so if you place your foot on the thigh, it doesn't belong there yet. If it can go there on its own, it's ready to be there. Now, as we're here in our tree, we want to lift up out of the hip joint rather than sinking into it. And we can grow our tree with the arms. As we Balance more and more on our tree over time. We get interlace, push the hands away. 
We can begin to rotate or move the tree like it's in the wind. Or we can even close our eyes. And as we do that, we feel the little muscles working in the foot, which is the point, the strength of those. From here, we'll bring the knee forward to release out. And we'll come to the other side, where it comes into the left foot. We focus on that balance, and we work the tree up. So it's not about just going into the posture, but about feeling the process of how we get there. Feeling the shake and wobble of the body. Feeling how the joint works when we sink into it and when we release out of it. Listening to the little movements. And then we release that knee forward and down. So there are a number of different standing postures we can work on. There's um, another one that we'll do right now that's a classic um, twisted posture. So for this one, um, the Shiva, you'll take your right knee up and arms come out. And then you're going to twist toward that knee. And you'll look toward the back hand. So this involves a number of things. Focus, and balance, and twist. So you're going to press your foot standing down. And then you just lift it, those toes are flexed. Come back center, and release. And then we do the other side. Left knee comes up. Arms out, and then we rotate. So the minute we lose focus in standing postures, we lose balance. But standing foot is repressing, repressing into the bony part. The arch lifts. And come back center. So there's other poses like eagle or Standing Pigeon, or Warrior Three, or many other different ones that we can do for our balancing poses to help strengthen those muscles and help us with focus and core engagement. So while they look graceful, they all have a purpose in yoga. It's not just being pretty to look at. They're helping us with our concentration and our strength. So, when you do a yoga class, it may seem like it's sort of willy-nilly how it's put together, but it's not. Every part of the class has a purpose. So the sun salutations are warming the body, and the standing poses are helping to improve strength and flexibility within the torso, within the legs, strengthen the arms, in the shoulders, opening up the hips, lubricating the joints. The balancing portion is improving concentration, improving the strength in, in the uh, ankles and the feet. When we get to the finishing portion, it's improving the relaxation and the ability to recover, and also improving um, strength flexibility, back flexibility. Um, and improving the mental state too at that time. The ability to be with oneself. So every part has a purpose. And throughout all of that, we're focusing on the breath. And that is helping the uh, stress reduction portion. And that's one of the main reasons why people come to yoga. So if you put all these parts together, 
you can do this anytime. The standing portion, the standing postures, are where little by little, by practicing, we can start to listen to our own body and what it is we need. We begin to not judge our bodies because it doesn't look like uh, somebody else's in the picture that we saw, a triangle or side angle, because you're not practicing with their body. You're practicing with yours. And whatever it looks like right now is correct. The purpose is not to look like somebody else's body, but to practice with your body and to understand how it functions so that you can use it better in everyday life. And that's why we practice yoga. Because the purpose is never to be somebody else is to be the best version of you. I hope this is useful to you. Please continue to practice. Comment and let me know if there's something that you would like to learn about for your own yoga practice. Peace to you, friends. Thank you for watching. Namaste.